There we are. Merry, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. I like saying that. I love the month of December. It's a good month for celebrating Jesus. The focus turns to Jesus more and more. Love that. Love that. Merry, Merry Christmas, everybody. Good morning, Debbie Nolan. Hi, Nancy. Merry Christmas, everybody. Glad to have everyone on. I'm Elizabeth Sharon Ann, doing the one year daily Bible study with you. We'll have some ladies on this weekend, Saturday and Sunday to continue it. Good morning, Vic Harris. Hi there. Good to see you on. We do the one year Bible, read all the way through. So we're on day 344. We just have 21 more days and we've read all the way through the Bible. If this is your first year to do that, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for you. No, that's not even a true statement. I don't care who you are. I'm excited for you. Anybody that's read all the way through the Bible this year, I'm excited for you. And for those that you've read it more than once this year, bravo, bravo. I salute you. And I just, I'm excited for you because I know the blessings that are yours because you've done that. His word never turns back void. It is always, always, always renewing our minds as we read. And I love what he's doing. I love what he's doing. And I'm enjoying this time of the year reflecting on 2021. And oh, yesterday and today has been po powerful. This morning was powerful. In fact, we do a, a little uh, team huddle in the mornings. And usually on Fridays, uh, those that aren't here in the office, we conference them in on a phone call this morning I sent the word out and said no let's do a zoom I want to do a zoom this morning I got some stuff to say this morning <laughs> and a lot of it's come from reflecting on the year um, seeking God for my scriptures I, I you know have you ever um, had somebody tease you and it's like they've got you know cotton candy and so if you don't like con cotton candy pretend it's your favorite candy your favorite kind of candy right here in front of you and they say you want to bite and they come and they come close to your lips and they pull it back and they come close to your lips and they pull it back uh, that's how I feel about my scriptures for next year about my words for you next year I've got some words already that has been formulating um, now I think last year was my first year that I got more than one I had several words last year um, but um Normally, it's one word that I get. I think I shared with you, I have a friend that asks for a new word every month, and it works wonderfully for her. But uh, then along with that word, there's, there's always a scripture. And sometimes, in fact, the scripture comes first, and from the scripture, I get the word. But it's like, it's like he's teasing me this year. Like, it's, it's coming right here. You know, I'm just getting like a sweet bite of that cotton candy, and he pulls it back. Now, that is not what God's doing. I, I'm being... I'm just having fun this morning. I'm explaining to you how I can feel it. It's, it's there. I know that I'm getting ready to have a major breakthrough in, in what God is showing me for this next year, but it's just slightly evading me. Now, the truth is, I believe with all my heart that for a long time now, God's been speaking to me clearly about 2022 and that he's already given me words for 2022 and the scriptures are there for 2022 because that's how God is. He's already done it. I'm really not waiting on God. I'm, I'm, I am centering myself to where I can really hear, but the anticipation of it is beyond anything I've experienced. Now I've had some years where my word was overflow. My, I mean, I've had some Big, big, big words. Dream big. <laughs> uh, nothing compares to what I'm anticipating this year. And, and it's based on what I'm reading in the word. It's based on my intimacy with my father. Um, and it's spiritual. 
it's it's spiritual see i oh i oh how do you know how do you how do i describe it how do i how do i share that how can i take this out and share it with each one of you that as you close your eyes and you center in to where he lives and you tell him i want to hear your voice i mean you guys know i've been sharing my journey with you i mean was it yesterday or day before that i I had the conversation about, oh, Lord, forgive me for the times I've been selfish. Forgive me for the times I've failed. You know, forgive me for my sins. Help me, Lord, take that from me. I mean, th that's what this time is for. I mean, that's why we reflect on 2021. We reflect on the year prior. It, there's a purging and a cleansing that takes place. And I love how the scriptures always just help me with that. I mean, today's reading in Amos. December the 10th of 2021, Amos chapter one, uh, verse uh, uh, one through chapter three, verse 15, is that very thing for me. I mean, it just goes right along with what I'm doing. And by the way, you know, I believe that um, 2022 will be a banner year for our Bible study ministry. I, I believe that each one of you are going to get more active liking and commenting on the Bible study itself. You know, I'm not a social media expert by any stretch of the imagination. I've spent very little time studying how to do this. I'm just, I wake up each morning and say, okay, Lord, here I am. And that's about the extent of it. But I've been told <laughs> by people who seem to know that the more the viewers will, will hit like and will comment, the more the readership will grow, that it gets out there, that I don't know how those algorithms work, but if you're just signing in and, and listening, uh, which is a very, very, very good thing, there's no multiplication in that. But, but when you like and you post and you share, there's multiplication in that. So I'm asking you guys, help us multiply this. That's what I sense. I, I, I sense that our partnership is going to have an exponential growth to how many people want to partake in the ministry, partake in the anointing, the healing, the revelations of this ministry, and that this Bible study is going to go far and wide and encourage people to read the Bible for themselves. And uh, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I am believing that 2022 is the year that uh, YouTube will have a thousand subscribers uh, yes, we've had some of our videos on there, but we're still struggling. Uh, I've got several YouTube channels as part of the problem. I've had a, a turnover of, of who helps me with that. That's part of the, the struggle um, with that. Um, but hey, you know, this is what I understand and I know about anything you set out to do. The greater the resistance, the greater the glory. The reason it's been very difficult this year for me to get firm footing in YouTube is because once it happens, guys, look out. I know that I know that I know that God is a God of multiplication. And it's not multiplication for my sake. It's about getting the word out. It's about getting his word out. It's about helping people. Um, we met with a precious uh, partner of ours yesterday that sat and I think that woman, I, I, she's the one that just shares the grateful journal. I, I don't know how many people she ministers to. We didn't ask her, did we? But I, I don't know how many people every morning she's talking about her timeline, about she knows at what time she has to get up in the morning. And she says, I sit down and I'm ready. And I have from this time to this time till I have to go to work. And I've got this many people I have to get my grateful journal out to. And Oh my gosh, just blessed my socks off. I'm telling you. So, okay, back to Amos and how it fits with my purging and my cleansing and, and my renewing of my mind for the new year that's ahead. <clears throat> if you've gotten your, your word for next year, uh, if you don't mind, share it, share it with us in the comments. Write, write your, your word down in the comments. Share it with us. If you got your scriptures, write those down for us. Share your scriptures with us. Um, this weekend, I'll go back and I'll look up every one of them and I'll read every one of them. Okay, back to Amos. Amos is um, the first Hebrew prophet that actually had his writings put into our Bible. Um, his name means to carry and to be born by God. B-O, it was 
uh, B-O-R-N-E by God, which once again means carry, born by God. <clears throat> and, and then um, I, you know, a couple of years ago, let's see what year, 2019, I guess it was, I actually counted how many times in today's reading God spoke through Amos and said, the people have sinned again and again. And there's nine, eight times, I guess. It's in Amos chapter one, verse three, the people of Damascus have sinned again and again. Uh, verse six, this is what the Lord says. The people of Gaza have sinned again and again. Verse nine, this is what the Lord says. The people of Tyre have sinned again and again. Uh, verse 11, this is what the Lord says. The people of Edom have sinned again and again. Verse 13, this is what the Lord says. The people of Ammon have sinned again and again. Verse chapter two, verse one starts off. This is what the Lord says. The people of Moab have sinned again and again. Verse four, this is what the Lord says. The people of Judah have sinned again and again. And then the eighth time is verse six. Chapter two, verse six, this is what the Lord says. The people of Israel has sinned again and again. Why is it important that he continues to point out sin? Why, why does he continue to, to just over and over? I mean, we're, this is December the 10th. We are 15 days away from the day we've chosen to celebrate the birth of Christ. Why is it that we need to sit here and read eight different times about the sins of the people? It's over and over and over again in the Old Testament about what sin is, how they sinned, what they did, what were the actions, what was the idolatry, prostitution. I mean, my goodness, we read about that a lot because God refers to it as prostitution that we defile the marriage bed when we sin. It's just like cheating on your spouse. When we sin, it's just like cheating on Jesus himself. We betray him. Our sins aren't even against man. And, and spiritually, when you get right down to it, our sins even are, is not against us. When we sin, it's against God. And the reason why one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why, I think that he keeps it in front of us over and over and over again is because of our tendencies to justify our own sins. I mean, there's things right now that I can assure you, I am no exception to this. There are things right now today that if you really listen to God, that you're doing, that you're justifying, whether it's my eating unhealthy or whether it's my snapping at my husband and then justifying it, whether it's saying that we're worried about our kids when the Bible clearly tells us that worry is a sin. We're not supposed to be worried. It's okay to be concerned. We're not supposed to worry because you're supposed to have faith. It takes faith to please our father. Worry is the opposite of faith, so worry certainly doesn't please our Father. Whether it's a friendship you shouldn't have, whether it is the addiction to your cell phone, if it's an addiction to the television, if it's an addiction, if it's how come you don't read your Bible more, we, we, we justify our sins. And as we continue to read and continue to read and continue to read, um, it's not as easy to justify it. Indian? It's not as easy to justify it. it. You can't hardly just keep reading over and over again the things that God hates and then set out here in our culture and in our environment and on our government and on our neighborhoods and in our churches that says that, oh, no, it's okay. If it feels good, do it. Oh, no, you know, you know, it's okay. It, it's okay when God's saying what God says. Anyway, so 
just a few comments about Amos. Um, the the other thing, uh, let's look at Amos chapter three, verse verse three. Can two people walk together well without agreeing on the direction? Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? Hmm. I'm gonna let that soak in for a minute. Hmm, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? Hmm. So I, I know you already know where my thoughts are. God in us, the hope of glory. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? We talked this year about how when the Israelites were exiled into Babylonia because of their sins, that it was their own actions that took them there. Two people walking together have to agree on the direction. And we wonder why God writes it down that he had them exiled. See, in those moments, in those moments, he did not take away their right to choose. Mm, that, I'm telling you guys, this is deep stuff. If you'll let God take you there, it will mess with your theology. It will mess with your traditional beliefs that gets taught out here in these same churches that says, well, it's okay. It's okay. We, we just don't have to read that part of the Bible. Or here, let us make our own Bible that leaves that part out. You know that there's denominations out there that's done that, right? The parts they don't like, they've just eliminated it. I mean, there's parts of this New Living Translation that's left out that makes me mad when I think about it. <laughs> I still use it. God talks to us through a donkey. God has spoken to me through this translation, probably more than all the other translations. But once I started doing social media Bible studies, I've stayed with the New Living Translation so that uh, those that are not comfortable with the King James Version has an ease and a flow when they first start reading the Bible. You'll graduate up. You'll get to the point where you got to have more. You, if you keep doing this, you'll not be comfortable staying in the New Living Translation. You'll need the richer, deeper, literal word-for-word -word translations. This starts planting the meaning, and it, it, it's to me, this is seed planting inside of us. It plants the seed, and as the seed grows, we seek deeper and deeper and deeper. It's just like you'll see all of our good friends on here, um, Debbie and, and Anne and um, Nancy and... Um, and I'm not thinking of all of them, but the, there's several of you guys that are so good about coming back and adding a richness to the text that you read this morning and you got something and you'll put it in the comments and see to me, it's the whole ball of wax. It is what I speak in the morning, uh, but it's also what's written down in, a, in their context, uh, in, the, in the text messages that comes together and creates the synergy of this whole daily reading today. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? See, we want to read that. It's, it's kind of like justifying our sins. It's like, well, I'll still go to heaven if I smoke. I mean, and let me not do that because I'm not, I'm not trying to bring judgment on anybody. I'm been very, very, very transparent with you guys that I have a spiritual battle going on about my weight. I know it's spiritual. I know it's de demonic. So let's just, let's, let's leave it. Let's pick on me that I can so easily justify and say, well, it's okay. Cause I'm free to eat anything I want to. Uh, and then when I'm doing that, I'm ignoring the part that says, is it true? Is it lovely? Is it, is it what's good for you? I ignore the part that says, take care of your temple. I ignore the parts. I mean, the other places it's written when I say, well, I got the freedom. I could, I mean, it's not what goes in me that defiles me. 
uh, those that's truth but see i'm i'm picking and choosing i'm i'm justifying well you know what i've done the same thing with this particular scripture amos 3 chapter uh, chapter 3 verse 3 can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction and i want to make that all about when i'm on the right path when i'm on the narrow path but see, the truth is because all of my sins have been forgiven, when I fall over here, God's not disagreeing with me to fall over here. He's, he's not taking away my free choice to fall into this ditch if I so choose. And this is what I know, is that if I, if I make a choice and a decision or repeated choices and repeated decisions that gets me in this ditch, pretty soon I'm here. Pretty soon I'm here. The narrow path is right here. Pretty soon I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Starts with a teeny tiny thought. That's where it starts. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? And then verse seven. Mm -mm, let's see, what year was it? 2018, I guess, is when these scriptures first started jumping off the page at me. Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plan to his servants, the prophets. Well, I'm a New Testament believer, and that means that he never does anything without revealing it to me first. He tells me things in advance. God tells me things in advance. God tells you things in advance. Why do you think that I'm looking for my word for 2021, uh, for 2022? This is 2021. Um, why, why do you think I'm looking for my word, my guiding scriptures for 2022? You know, quite frankly, as I sit here right now, I think I've got a new level of revelation about it, that I'm not to limit him to just a word. I'm not to limit him to just a scripture, because what he's doing is so much bigger than that in every one of our lives. It's so much bigger than that. Revelation chapter two, verses one through 17. Wow. This is good stuff, guys. I, I've got all different colors all through this. It's man. Again, this is John. He's been exiled to an island. And in his quiet time, you know, I, I haven't done the research. Maybe I should, but I didn't even think about it until this moment. This thought didn't come to me until just this moment. I know it's probably written somewhere what the conditions was like for him um, on that island. But, but I know for me, in my imagination, and I just have to believe it's a sanctified imagination that's giving me this, I, 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 I assume that he was very isolated. But this was, he was exiled to an island because they were going to kill him. I mean, they wanted him to die. So that isolated him away from people, I'm thinking. So then I'm telling you, this is Elizabeth having a revelation in this moment. Um, and so therefore, what distractions did he have? He didn't have any work to do. He'd been exiled. He, there wasn't people around. There was nobody for him to preach to. You know, it looked as though this is this is where these terms that are lifebloods to me, things are not always as they seem. See, it seemed as though John's life was over. It seemed as though his ministry had ended. It seemed as though the purpose for him being here didn't exist anymore because he'd been exiled to an island. And yet look at what he wrote down for us. Look at what is said in today's reading. Verse two, I know all the things you do. See, make this personal for you. For I know all the things you do, Tammy. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance, Tammy, my daughter. I know you don't tolerate evil people. Verse four, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. But look how far you've fallen, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you've let it wane. You've let it, that fire when you first got on fire for me is, is, is drifting. It's not, it's not the same. Verse nine, I know about your sufferings and your poverty. 
but you are rich. There's my shot of adrenaline for today, guys. It doesn't say I'm going to be rich. It says I'm rich. I wonder how rich Donna John felt on that island when he was given this vision. And he heard these words from the father. <laughs> John, you're rich. What do you mean I'm rich? Wait a minute. If I look around, I'm on an island. None of my family's here. None of my friends are here. Father, I'm, I'm all alone. God, are you sure you're talking to me? I, wait a minute. No, 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 no. John, you know, God, do, do you not remember all the mistakes I've made? God, no, 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 no. Don't you know that I'm, but, but God, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm, I can't get around the way I used to. Don't, don't you know that God, don't you know? And, and he's saying, I know about your sufferings and your poverty. I know how much you've got your in your bank account down to the penny. And you're rich. What if we conducted our life as though we're rich? You're rich. And then I see that person that's in need. I hear of that single parent. And I have the attitude that I'm rich instead of the attitude of, ooh, I better check my account and see if I got enough. The things we would do different. Huh. Man, oh man, oh man. This is just good stuff, good stuff. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. The devil will throw uh, some stuff at you in prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days, but if you remain faithful. So this, so this is the part. See, I've highlighted certain parts of it. Not that I'm leaving out the Bible. I, I'm not. I, I don't know how to. I know you get it. I know you get it. That's why you're on here. Um, these are real words to John. It's a real thing that happened. He had this vision. John and God had this conversation, but he's using it. It's the reason why he wrote it in a book for us that here we are over 2000. Well, this would have been going, yeah, over 2000 years later that we're still reading the same story again is because it's applicable to us today. And this is how it applies to me right now today. Elizabeth, I know about your suffering and your poverty, but, but darling, Elizabeth, apple of my eye you're rich don't you see it elizabeth you're rich <laughs> don't don't be afraid of what's about to happen don't be afraid because there may be suffering involved don't you know i'm with you don't you know that i'm here and don't you know the enemy's going to come at you elizabeth why are you surprised by that quit being surprised elizabeth but if you remain faithful even when facing death I will give you the crown of life. Ask me why I think we see two miracles for sure on earth. The birth of a baby and the home going of a saint. This statement right here is why my 82-year-old daddy right now that's had three surgeries in the last year, just finished a surgery yesterday, got to come home. They tell him he only has about 30% of his heart. They tell him he only has one kidney functioning at 10%. And they did the second surgery in just a matter of weeks on him. And why I don't have to worry that my daddy's going to suffer in the end. Read right here. But if you're, if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. Things are not always as they seem. What we see is suffering. There's a grace that is available to them in that moment that you and I can't see, that you and I don't experience. We discount the power of God's grace. That truly in that moment, they're receiving a crown of life. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand. And I want to finish with that. Anyone 
with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand. No wonder we as Christians in this world struggle when we won't acknowledge the power and the gifting of the Holy Spirit. It is written over and over and over again that we understand God's mysteries through the Spirit. That if we listen to the Spirit, then we will understand. Man, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, pray right now. In fact, let's just pray right now that you'll receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that there's many of you out there that will receive the gift of speaking in tongues. And it's not the tongues that's the power. It's the evidence of, because God knew we would doubt. And so he gave us an evidence to take away the, the doubt. So Father God, we just pray right now that at the sound of my voice, I'm going to say a prayer and have them repeat after me, Lord. And we're going to invite your spirit to come in and to fill us to the full and overflowing. And Father God, your word tells us that it is available for all, all. You've left no one out that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is available to us all and that you'll give us the evidence of it by a, by a, a language that we speak that is foreign to us, that we don't understand. And I thank you, Father God, that right now, in the name of Jesus, this is happening, that, that he chose to die and be buried and raised again because he said in his place, in his physical place, Father, you send his spirit and his spirit will comfort us and his spirit will give us the same power that Jesus had as he walked the face of the earth. And we will have that power and we'll have that power to understand. So if you're desiring this right now this morning and you hear my voice, just repeat after me, Father God, I'm ready. Father God, I desire all of you. Father, if you've got something for me today, I want it all. I don't want anything left out, Father God. So fill me right now with your spirit to the full and overflowing. Father, just let it flow into me. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you for filling me full of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for my prayer language that I'll just loose my tongue and I'll let you take control of my tongue, Father. And I'll pray in, in our special prayer language, the secret prayer language that only you understand, Father. Then I receive it. In the name of Jesus, amen. That is the very, very best. It's the second best Christmas present I could give you. Salvation is first and in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Merry, Merry Christmas, everybody.